All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this sandbag wall. It's a bit of a process to get it to where it doesn't look like it's a bunch of rigid boards stacked on top of one another. The way they're bowed down between and everything, but that's kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this, and we'll start from scratch. Find my grid here. There's my grid, and we're gonna start with a plane. Something quick here, drag that out, and we're going to scale this up quickly. And then we're going to get a box here, and we'll get a box out on the on here. And we want this box to be 18 by 36. This is inches by three and a half tall, roughly. We want to pull the box off of the bottom plane up about yay high or so and uh, we want to put some segments in here one two four this way oops I want four that way and I want six this way the more you put in the better results you'll have but I'm trying to keep mine as low as possible and I'm gonna go to the top view I'm going to just convert this quickly to an edible poly. I'm going to grab some vertices here to round the corners off real quick. Something like so. Grab these ones here, pull them out some. There we go. Get out of that mode. Go to perspective view. Go to face mode. Grab all your faces. We're going to clear off the smoothing groups, clear all, put them all in one, and there's basically one sandbag, oops, and we'll, well, I guess we'll leave it right there, and we're off the plane like I was worried about, so we want to name this one A, now we need to start our row, so there's A, and then we want to pull this one up about yay far, we want to name this one B, Again here, holding down shift and make a duplicate and this one will be C and we'll do four rows so this will be D and then we want to grab this and pull this down with a little bit of overlap right in here so there's no light getting between there and we want roughly we'll go eight and then this one here, we're going to slide over and try to line this up as close as possible. Not as close as possible, just you want it in the center here. Something like that. Back to perspective view here. And we want to make the same eight copies in that direction there. So something like that. Eight. This one here, we just want eight. one here we want to line it up somewhat and we want eight copies too now we want to go top view we want to make a cont couple container walls to hold these so back to box make a box like that and we want no segments in our box and we want to make sure it's a little bit taller and that's good this can be any size as long as it's there to hold the bags and then we're going to zoom down here we want this to be about as close as possible without touching just get the top view so i can make sure that i am definitely something like that we're going to make another duplicate, hold down shift, pull it over, same thing, something like that. Perspective view, that's what we got. Now them are trapped in there, and we want to grab, now we want to select uh, the bottom row A and everything else, so something like that. We got the plane, the two boxes, the green boxes, and our row A of sandbags. 
Now we'll go and, oops, my bad. We got to convert all this stuff to edible polys first. So however you do it, convert to edible poly. Now we want to grab everything and go back and here's our cloth modifier. We want to put the cloth on there, go to object properties. We know that all our A sandbags need the cloth. And I'm going to use a preset of generic heavy. Leave all default. Come down to pressure. I'm going to start out at 50 and 0.3. And then I'm going to apply collision to the rest of the stuff in the scene. So collision. Hit OK. And simulate. First row drops down. There's our result. We're going to grab everything again in the second row B. Put another cloth modifier on it. Object properties. Now row A is already done, so we want collision on it. Row B is the row that we want to put the cloth on this time. And same thing, generic heavy. And the pressure I'm going to bump up each row by 10, so 60, and then the dampening though will still stay at 3. The, the rest of the objects we need to put collision on it, so there's your collision. Okay, and that row is ready to simulate. Let that run through. Okay, let's see. It looks pretty good so far. So we want to grab the third row, row C. So grab everything again and put a cloth modifier on it all again. Object modifier. Now we know row A and B are all done. So holding shift you can select all of them like that. Select the first one then the other one. Okay, and we want to uh, we want collision on those. Oh, I forgot these as well. We want the two of course we want the container walls. We need collision on all that. Row C is our new row. We want to put the cloth on it. So cloth, generic heavy, pressure I'm gonna go. Uh, 70 and dampening is 0.3 the last the ground plane we will put collision on it and simulate notice the first bag actually even falls down uh, because there's nothing underneath of it there and but it looks like somebody actually threw the bag down on top of the rest of them. So once that runs out, we got one more row to do. All right, grab everything. Another cloth modifier. I'm gonna put collision on everything, but the last row. This is all repetitive. Same thing. D. We want to put the cloth on there, and we want to go to generic heavy. We want the pressure 10, so we'll go 80, and the dampening is 0.3, and for the plane, we will put collision on it. Okay, simulate, cross your fingers, your computer don't crash. Let everything settle in. Well, that's probably good enough. You can cancel here, it don't matter. I'm going to grab everything here and uh, convert to edible poly. That way we lose all our cloth modifiers. 
go ahead and hide this and let's see what we got and it's pretty good they settled on top of each other pretty nicely here you can see how nice that one settled down in between and they're all you know kind of look they all have different none of them are the same and it kind of looks you know more realistic if you bumped up the polys on or the uh, edge loops and stuff put more resolution in you could even get better results so there's our wall right there and real quickly I'll show you you can delete them delete these and uh, let's see we want to get rid of that one and we want to let's see here so yeah I guess we can just duplicate this one here and slide it over something like that and then we can grab we'll hide this front view We'll grab this row here and shift and pull it up slide it over something like that and of course I'd take more time lining this up I'm just trying to do it quickly another row something like that then we want to take and delete these we got Something like that. This one here we need to duplicate. There we go. Something like that. We'll go back in perspective view. And we will take everything. down you can see that these fit pretty nicely together here like that you wanted to make a longer wall or you could twist these around 90 and basically make another wall running the other direction you could do whatever you wanted from here bunker Oops. whatever you might want that there didn't you know and didn't line up right so it's because it's twisted out so you need to spin it 180 oops and I keep double selecting another wall with the shift key but something like that except you delete the other wall in there yep there you have it there's your sandbags and then uh, from here I would take them and go in the UV layout and then substance uh, designer and painter and then uh, into UE4 and I'm kind of scared to see what the poly count is on all these but uh, you know let's see 21,000 that's not too awful bad I guess with today's computers and everything but you know in the old school ways you know how that is it's just a flat image plane with an image on it or a flat plane with an image on it so to me this looks a lot better than old school but all right I might make another video showing how to uh, further take this and complete it into a actual bunker and then put it in UE4 all right thanks for watching and we'll see you next time